This week we're doing something a little bit different than just walleye fishing, which is awesome. It's a good break for me to change over. We're going to be doing something that I haven't done in quite a while. We're going to be fishing big bluegills. We're in Jefferson County. We're on about a 1,400 acre lake. It's pretty deep and these fish are suspended. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off drifting. We've got a light wind today, northeast. Uh, it's kind of cool out this morning and uh, we're basically going to be using, this is kind of like a what would you call this, Bob? A spider. A spider. Absolutely. Yep. And we're going to put bait on there too? We've got to tip them with a, with a half a red worm. We're going to tip it with a half a red worm. And uh, basically these fish, we're going to be going over about 40 feet of water and they're suspended halfway down. So let's see what happens. Hey, and then if we catch enough bluegills and we get sick of catching bluegills, might even try for a walleye or two. So, and there's a lot of bass and pike in here too. Hey, this week's guest we have on our show, we've got Bob Davis our friend and we of course we've got Phil Dominic hey. Dr. Phil you know we're going to catch a lot of fish with these two guys in the boat so we'll have a great day stay tuned and see what happens Everything's at 20 feet. you know what I love fishing bodies of water I've never been on before because Especially when you got somebody with you that's been out here and has done it a lot of times. But it's always so interesting just to learn more and more. And that's the great thing I always say about fishing is that you're constantly learning. I'll tell you, anybody that thinks they know it all, they know nothing. That's a pretty easy phrase because I'm going to tell you, for a guy that spends over 300 days a year on the water like me, you're constantly learning. When you're in 60 feet of water or 40 feet of water and the fish are 20 feet down, Bob, how do you know that your bait's down in, in the zone where the fish are at when you, you know, when basically you're not using a line cone or anything? Most, most of the time I use the same, uh, the same uh, reels that have the same ratio. Okay. I, I just know that I can back reel 20 turns, 15 and 20 turns, yep. and I'll be somewhere so usually if I start with three rods, I'll go 13 turns back and set the reel stop. Okay. 15 turns back, set the reel stop. 18 turns back, set the reel stop. And then I'll see which one hits. Okay. If I if, if it's, to say, the 15, then I'll bring one up. Yep. I'll bring one, one up, three turns, and I'll take the other one back. Here we go, boys. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. Yeah, they do fight good, especially on that long rod. Oh, man. There we go. That's, that's a medium? That looks, whoa, come on, baby. That actually is a decent bluegill. Gosh, I haven't done this in a long time, you know. That was awesome. All right, now I'm just using an Aberdeen hook and a split shot in one of Bob's homegrown worms. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm loving this. Not too shabby. That's a nice fish. Yeah. That's a nice fish. You want to show them to the camera? It's pretty colored too. That is. Boy, we got two right off the bat like that. They just absolutely smoked it. Gotta love that. Boy, it sure is nice to do something different. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, I really don't care what I'm catching as long as I'm catching something. Well, that was on your on your brother's bug. That's awesome. You know, it's one thing I've known about Bob. I've known him for quite a while. Everything he does, he used to be a machinist and he still does some. Everything he does is precise. Which, you know, when it comes to fishing, little things, I've always said that, make such a huge difference. Gosh, I'll tell you, Bob, this is absolutely awesome. Oh, 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 look at that one. Look at that. There's a, now there's a that, nice one. That's a nice fish right that's there. Not, that's not a jumbo. But it's not a jumbo? Well, I, if it's not a jumbo, I tell you what. The that is look a, like they're from Mars. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful right there. Oh, there we go. Got one on my other end. Holy man. This is absolutely awesome, I'll tell you. Larry, you want to set them right there? Thanks, Bob. I rigged up this rod this morning. <laughs> oh, come on. That is absolutely not too shabby. Come on. Gotta love that. I mean, them are nice gills anywhere. I'll tell you that. Pretty colors on them. And 
Ted absolutely slammed it. Oh, 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 oh. oh, I love it. Oh, I haven't had this rod out of the closet in a long time. Oh, there we go. Oh, boy, that one's got it swallowed right down, too. And I'll tell you, I didn't, as soon as I saw him pop it twice, I set the hook on it and look at that hook. He's got it buried in there. Oh, you gotta love it. I gave you all the bait with the gas on I. <laughs> They must like that gas today. <laughs> I appreciate it. That, that trick did work. <laughs> the blind guy woke up. Bro, you got one. Bro, get the nut. Get the nut. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's a good one, too. Oh, Come here, baby. I sure love this rod, I'll tell you that. I wonder how this rod would be for walleyes. And basically, we're just, again, fishing over about 35 feet of water right now. And uh, we're about 20 feet down with all our rods because that's where we're marking everything. And that little trick that Bob showed me, I tell you, I honestly never knew that. I don't know why. I never even thought about it. Usually, you use some kind of stopper and uh, do it that way. But, boy, this works out perfect. Just open that bale up and just keep going until the line stops. And I'm right back at that about 20-foot mark. And been working pretty good. Oh, ooh, that feels like a nicer fish. Holy man, did that thing just absolutely slammed it through. Can you see how you can lose a rod? Yes, I can. <laughs> you were talking about before about losing losing some rods out here because of these fish. I like the underwater salmon. Did it? Oh, that's a nice fish. You got one too, Bob? I got one on Phil's rod. Yeah, of course. On Phil's <laughs> rod. <laughs> that's, you guys, that one, that's, that's a nice fish right up. there. That is a very nice fish. We got a double going now too. You know what? He seems to like when the wind blows a little bit harder just because it moves you more and it does make a lot of sense because you know just like current that wind creates that current and the fish are all facing forward waiting for everything to get blown to them on this side of the lake. That's a nice fish too. Are you eating? That's my job. I know. Right? I can't do both. Right? You are, what are you eating up there? You're not sharing it? I, I'm not huh? allowed to do that. You're a pro. I'm not. <laughs> nice. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, that that's definitely a nice one. Okay. Nice bluegill. Nice gill. On the spider again. Supposedly the only spider in the boat here. I don't know. That's the rumor. I'm not even eating and I'm catching Why'd you one. Why'd give him that rod? It's bluegill time. They do like it's the spider. It's bluegill time. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, spider that's man. Nice that's, a, that's the biggest one. Spider man. Oh, that's a nice ah. gill. Happy, happy catching fish. <laughs> <laughs> spider man. Oh, spider that man. Is BS. Da, da, da. That's right. Cut his line. Spider Man no attacks fair. again. Get the net! Another nice one. Here, swing it over this way. Yeah, oh, swing it over this way, too. He's going to cut that lure off. Where's that knife? All right, that's no fair. It's hard to believe. You'd think bluegills, they'll hit anything. It doesn't matter what you do. He's got the right color, the right spider, and I'll tell you, he is whooping us. It's just not fair. Hey, you know we had a great time this morning. We caught a bunch of bluegills and some real nice ones. But I saw that pike come after that big gill before, and I thought to myself, you know what? Let's switch up and see if we can. There's walleyes in this lake, there's pike in here, and a lot of bass, and let's we switch over and see if we can uh, try to catch some different species, you know? It's always fun catching bluegills, but sometimes it's nice to switch over, so let's see what happens, and we can always go back to catching gills if we can't catch anything else, but I think we will. Like that actually works. Ooh, nice man. Here we go. You know what? I just tied up a drop shot rig, and it wasn't even out there for two minutes. And the first thing, got a small largemouth right there. Fun little fish. You know what? I threw uh, the jerk minnow a bunch of times, and it had one bite on it. And then I just switched over to this. And again, we've got such a massive 
amount of weeds down there. And uh, sometimes that uh, drop shot with that finesse worm can be the key. Let's see, maybe it was just luck because that was the first, first cast out there. But you know, when it comes to fishing, you're constantly just have to have the confidence that the fish are down there. You know, especially when you see we're on such a shelf right here and just a ton of weeds down there. And you know there's gotta be a pile of fish sitting there. So you just gotta have that confidence and just keep changing until you can get something that works. But I'm just letting that thing drop down there, keeping my line tight, twitching it every once in a while. Oh, this is a little better. This one's a good fire. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm loving it. I am definitely loving that drop shot. I love fishing, I'll tell you that. That is not too bad of a fish right there, I'll tell you that. Now we're getting up there for sure. And I'll tell you, again, just twitching that finesse worm on a drop shot rig. I, this one, I'm back to about 20 inches on that one. I had this one hand uh, pike grab it one before and break it off. And uh, you know, this is a great way, you know, a lot of times you bring kids out too for them to fish because as long as they just don't overreact on it when you're twitching it, you know, it'll catch a lot of fish. Smallmouth, largemouth, pike, anything will grab that finesse worm. Gotta love it. I don't know what I got now. I don't know if it's just got down in the weeds here. But, yeah, oh, guess what I got? Oh. <laughs> I got a nice gill on the old drop shot rig. I was gonna say, he got into the weeds. Now that's a nice one, right there. Phil, I think I got the biggest gill of the day. See, and I didn't, hey, I didn't even need the spider, you know? Caught him on a dumb old Galdern finesse worm. Wow. Right. <laughs> Here we go, let's see what we got now. I tell you, I can't believe all the bass and bluegills in this lake. It's unbelievable. Oh, that's a. There's a nice one. Boy, that is a fighter too. No, I'll fling him. But yeah. There we go. Boy, he just engulfed that finesse worm too, I'll tell you. Gosh, I love fishing, I'll tell you. It's just, it doesn't matter how old you get, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is hard to beat. Nice large mouth, a little bit skinny. Hey, there's a lot of bluegills down there. Gotta love it. You know, when you're casting out and you're drop shot, and the key to it always is I usually have about, this one I got about 20, 22 inches on the drop shot. And basically the key to it is, you can see the bluegills just nailed that tail off of there, the little suckers. And uh, the key of it is to, that sinker will lay a lot of times on the, on the mat, the weed mat at the top, and you just sit there and twitch it, pull it a little bit, always keep your line tight, twitch it a little bit more and you'll just feel that thunk right away and as soon as you feel that, set the hook. But you don't want to overwork it. You know, you just twitch it a little bit, let it sit for a split second, twitch it again, let it sit. Work it really slow, that's the key. First fish on the finesse worm and you are a bluegill fisherman. <laughs> You're supposed to be fishing bass. I thought we were done with the bluegills. Not me, I'm never done with You're, them. I know, you are a pan fish connoisseur. I tell you, about every third cast, I'm connected with something. <laughs> Look at my, finesse, my poor finesse worm. It is amazing, the bluegills that we've caught today, along with everything else. That is a nice fish, I'll tell you that. But I'm fishing for bass. <laughs> the last one I caught was a nice one. Now we're going the opposite way. Come on, little guy can do better than that, I'm hoping. I tell you, you know, one thing about this finesse worm is that a lot of action, man, a lot of action. They're not monsters, but they're all fun. And what a great way, again, for me, the big thing about this whole show is to try to get more kids involved in the outdoors and people in general. You know, I've always said over and over, and I kind of start preaching about this, there's no more natural, nor there's no better place 
to be than the outdoors. Good values, good family, good fishing. Life doesn't get any better. Holy moly! <laughs> I'll tell you. Like I said, about every third cast, I get something. Oh, that's a nice fish there. Look at that. Again, on my finesse worm. Where is my finesse worm? There. Look at that. I don't care where you fish. That's a nice bluegill. It's not 10 inches, like I always hear people say they're catching all these buckets of 10 inches, but that's a good fish right there for sure. What do you got? I don't know. Oh, I got one too. Cool. Yeah. Let's see if we got it. And mine's going by you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got Bassarama going here, folks. Look at that. Look at that. The bass to the right. <laughs> Phil was cheating. He was using a regular crawler trying to catch a couple more gills. And man, we got to, just got a double. Uh, see, finally, the bass hat, bass shirt pays off at last. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> It doesn't matter what lake you're fishing, you know, it's all great. And I'll tell you, you know, it's amazing. And Bob kind of had this, this, he said this a little while ago when he asked what time it was. And he said, it's already five o'clock. And he said, yep, time really melts away when you're fishing. And that is the truth. It's amazing how every day goes by so fast. All right, That's excellent. Hey, again, we had an absolutely awesome day here in Jefferson County fishing for bluegills and bass. I want to thank my friend Bob Davis and Phil Dominic for joining us today out on our outing. Just remember to join us on Facebook and sign up and subscribe on our YouTube channel. For Larry Smith Outdoors, remember, it's always a great day to be alive, and now it's my time. Ooh, that's a better one. Oh, oh, there's a pipe with it, right there. Big pike? Yeah. How big was he? Oh, there's a pike. There's that pike again.